peeps we are back we are talking the real housewives of salt lake city season four episode three hey before we get into the video please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when i post new content hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel and share thanks okay so listen <laughs> peeps I am loving Salt Lake City this season so far. I think this might be my favorite season of this show. I think that all the ladies are clocked in. Meredith is unhinged, but she is definitely engaged. These ladies, they're funny. I am loving this. In this particular episode, between Mary and her crazy commentary in her confessionals, that outfit Lisa put on for dinner, Meredith, oh my God, drunk Meredith with the fake British accent. You know, Whitney being Whitney, childish. Gosh, she is so childish. Heather being totally tore up, pissy drunk. This is so disgusting. And then Angie and Monica, listen, those two ladies, they are 1000% working for those snowflakes. They are trying to hold on to them. Listen, Monica grabbed her snowflake in one season. She didn't even come on as friend of. She already had a full-fledged housewife feel. You know, I like her. I really do. Anyway, let's just get into this review. All right, so the episode picks up right where it left off. It's the first day they're at the Trixie Motel. And you know what? I hope the Trixie Motel stays around for a very long time. And I hope that they get a ton of business now that they have been seen on the Housewives. The hotel is so cute. It's like a Barbie dream come true at this little motel. You can definitely see that Trixie has put in a lot of work. Um, into this hotel. Of course, Mary had no idea who Trixie was because, you know, Mary, Miss, I'm the first lady, I'm the pastor of the church. You know, she has no idea about how big and famous Trixie is as a drag queen. But to be honest, even though, you know, I'm a lady of the world, I didn't know who Trixie was either, but now I do. So when they get there, Lisa is devastated and she brings up to Trixie that she's lost her, you know, $60,000 ring. And of course, Monica is just completely astounded and pissed off. She's just shocked that Lisa is bringing this up. And Trixie said, you know, if you just want a new piece of jewelry, didn't say so, you know, listen, Monica in this outrage, I, I'm on the fence. I'm team Lisa. I'm team Monica at the same time. And we'll talk about that later. When Trixie says that the other ladies are here, all of a sudden, all the ladies look shocked. They were thinking, what do you mean the other ladies are here? And then all of a sudden, here comes Whitney and Angie. And honey, listen, they are completely shocked, especially Meredith and Heather and Monica. Mary, God love her. Mary says, who the hell is Angie? <laughs> I said, oh gosh, I think that Mary is trying to act like as if season three never happens. Okay, she don't know any of these people. I just think it's really crass, tacky, and a real too much to just show up on a trip that you weren't invited to. You know, if a whole group of girls got together and they didn't invite me, I'm not going to show up. I'm not going to push myself off on people. I don't want to go where I'm not wanted. I don't want to go where I'm not celebrated. I don't want to go where the people are looking at me whispering saying, well, you know, what the hell is she doing here? She don't have any business here. You know, just don't do it. And I would just like to say too, do you guys remember last season when um, Angie K and, and Jen had their event? They purposely did not invite Angie H. Angie H didn't just show up. No, she kept her butt at home and she stayed with her family and friends who wanted to be around her. Not like Angie K here, who is just thirsty as Meredith would call her. You know, Angie makes some kind of comment where she believes that she deserves to be there. She should be there. I don't know what makes her think that she deserves to be there. She should be there. First of all, you and Meredith were arguing last season. You argued at the reunion. This was Meredith's event. Heather does not deal with you. And so, you know, you really don't deserve to be there. You don't have to be invited and you definitely didn't have to just show up. So everybody goes to pick out their rooms. Meredith is a little 
pissed off and she has every right to be. Whitney brings Angie, they show up early, they take the biggest and best room and then leave the rest for the girls, which I thought was extremely tacky. Another thing that I thought was kind of crazy is Whitney was doing an interview for some blogger and she was saying that she has no idea where Meredith lives because Meredith doesn't live in Salt Lake City and she wants to know where does she keep all of her stuff? She was trying to be funny. Where does she keep all of her forks? Where does she keep all of her clothes and everything? Because she certainly doesn't live in Utah. You know, she has no idea where Meredith's real house is. I think that Meredith and Whitney are going to fall out even more as the season progresses. And I think we're also gonna find out that there's a whole lot more going on behind the scenes with Meredith and Whitney. And I can't wait to see it. I am actually looking forward to the Take Down Whitney season. I don't know when that's gonna be, but I'm gonna be here for it when it does. Whitney is sitting out with Angie and they're having a little snack, a little lunch. And Angie says to, um, Mary, hey Mary, you wanna come sit with us? And Mary said, no, I'm not gonna sit over there with you and please stop talking to me like that. I said, holy shit, talking to you like what? Was it her accent? What was it? Cause all she said is, hey Mary, you wanna come over and sit with us? So Mary sits down pretty close to them and starts talking to Whitney. I said, well, what does it matter if you sit with them? You still talking to, you know, Whitney. So Mary says, so why did you come early? And she says, well, I know Trixie, Trixie and her friends. So I just called her to see if I can come down and you know, a little bit early. Mary says, well, that's just childish. And then Angie tries to jump in and oh my God, Mary said, I'm not talking to you. And Angie quickly shut the hell up. I said, oh my God, Angie, you don't know Mary. You don't want those problems, just be quiet. I mean, it was, it was, it was a bit much. I, Mary, she handled her and Mary, you don't have to be so mean. Oh my goodness. Mary was right though about Whitney. That was childish. You act like you didn't do anything wrong. So why didn't you just ask Meredith? Hey, I know you didn't invite Angie, but you know, Angie and I are close. Angie and Lisa are close. Angie and Monica know each other. Can we just invite Angie? And then if she said yes, bring her with everybody else. If she said no, leave Angie at home with her husband. Now, when Meredith comes outside to go over to Heather's room and she walks right by them without speaking to them, it was hilarious. They were pissed. Like, did she just pay us dust? Yes, she did. In that terrible outfit, she walked right by them as if she had never seen them before. Okay, so when Meredith came out and she had little gifts for each one of the girls and she didn't have a gift for Angie, Angie was acting extremely petty. She was making comments like, oh, so, let everybody know that I wasn't invited. She was being extremely childish, extremely petty. It makes no sense. Meredith then decided that she was gonna pair the girls off in groups of two and each girl would dress the other girl in their pair. And she says, and since, you know, Angie, you know, you don't have a partner, you can just hang out with Whitney. Angie tries to get a little smart by making this comment. Thanks for announcing that I wasn't invited. And you know, Monica, you know, off to the side, she said, "Woo, this is getting a little feisty right off the bat. And listen, Angie didn't appreciate it. Angie was mad as hell. She's gonna go off to the side talking to Lisa and Whitney, trying to talk about Monica needs to calm down. She brought Monica into this group. Honey, you didn't bring Monica into this group. Monica knew you through Jen. She already knew Lisa. Monica had dirt on Jen and dirt supposedly on you and Lisa and uh, the producers brought her in. You didn't. Mm -mm, no, ma'am. She didn't come in with a title that said Angie's friend at the bottom. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. So while she was in there trying to talk crap about Monica, Monica heard. Monica steps into the room and she says, well, I hear you're talking, so you must be upset. Monica handled her really nice. She really did. I said, this is why I like her. She is real down to earth and she is giving real Monica. She is not giving I am fake as hell. She tells Angie, listen, you were acting ridiculous. You were being rude and disrespectful. And as your friend, I think it's my job to tell you that. And that is true because first of all, you weren't invited. Second of all, when you got here, 
if you really was truly trying to get back in good with Meredith and be a part of the group, what you would have done was said, hey, Meredith, can I talk to you over here? Pulled Meredith to the side and said, hey, I know I wasn't invited. Please don't be upset with Whitney. I really wanted to come. I'm, I come in peace. If we could just maybe sit down and talk it out, we can figure out a way to bridge this gap and try to, you know, work things out. But instead, she came guns a-blazing, acting petty as hell and being stupid. You are not acting like somebody who wants to be a part of the group. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, did anybody notice something was going on with Mary's elbow? When they were sitting by the pool and she was eating them chips, her elbow looked like it was sore or hurt or bruised up. It looked pretty bad. I hope everything's all right with Mary. So Monica and Mary shopping together. Honey, listen, they were hilarious. They were hilarious. You know, I have never once been a fan of Mary in her fashion choices, okay? But anyway, I thought she did a great job when she picked out Monica's uh, black and silver dress, but Mary didn't really want Monica picking anything out for her. She did, however, let Monica pick out that yellow jacket, but no ma'am. Monica and Mary did really good together. Whenever Monica would pick up something that Mary hated, she'd say, what do you think? And Mary would say, I don't like it, or no. Monica said, okay, and just put it right back. They worked really good together. Now this outfit that Meredith picked out for Lisa was absolutely disgusting. It was terrible. Now I'm gonna tell you, that little belt wrap coin thing that she was wearing, I have one of those, okay? Do not judge me, peeps. I have that because at one point in my life, I was taking a belly dance aerobics class. We all had them. You've got to make the noise. I mean, seriously, that was the funnest part. Getting one of those chain belts and being able to shake my hips, that was so fun. Daggone it, I need to get back into that. Anyway, anyway, Lisa is a good sport because she wore that mess. Okay, let me tell you, they all looked ridiculous. Lisa looked ridiculous. <laughs> First of all, Lisa looked the worst. It was so tacky. Meredith looked wrinkled. Whitney looked as if she was, you know, church on the top and going to hell on the bottom. Heather looked like she was straight out of a 90s movie. And at any point, she was about to break dance and spin around on the damn ground. It was too much. Mary and Monica looked okay. And that mess that Angie picked out, I said, oh God, girl, put it back on the rack. We know you're Greek. Leave it alone. I mean, it was a mess. Lisa said that Meredith clearly hates her. Now listen, when Meredith was on Watch What Happens Live, she said that that outfit that Lisa wore was her joke outfit, that she had actually picked a real outfit for Lisa and Lisa never tried it on. So she said that she wanted to give props to Lisa for actually wearing the joke outfit and taking one for the team because she could have worn the other real outfit that Meredith picked out. And I think that that was really nice because Lisa, she, in my opinion, she, she did take one for the team, even though she did kind of act like she was pissed off about wearing it. But if there was a real outfit, she should have worn that. Maybe production had something to do with that in the background because they went to a really nice restaurant and there's no way in hell that I would wear any of that crap out in public. You are not getting me in this see-through shirt, a thong, and a jingling coin skirt. It, no ma'am. So when they get on the bus, Mary tries to give Lisa a compliment about that outfit. And then Lisa, of course, brings up the fact that she's still upset about the loss of this ring. And Monica, she is not here for it. She really isn't. Um, listen, we'll talk about it later, but it's the same day. I mean, come on, she lost this ring. Now, when they walked into that nice restaurant wearing that mess they was wearing, I, I felt bad for them. I felt bad for the staff. I felt bad for the customers having to see this mess. And you know, as a customer, I don't think that I would have been offended, but I would have been giggling uncontrollably. Like what the hell are they wearing? And where did they come from? You know, were they at a costume party? You know, where the costumes don't have to coordinate? You know, where the hell have they been? And they just decided to come to this nice establishment. It was really bad. I would have felt a little humiliated <laughs> coming in there, especially if I was Lisa. 
Mary in the confessionals, she says, Lisa, whoever picked out your outfit, they don't like you. You really should know that going forward and they do not like you. I mean, <laughs> Mary Cosby, she is hilarious in those confessionals. Who, Meredith, you should have insisted that she try the real outfit. A real friend would have never let her come out in that. Then they decide that they want to play a game. It was Whitney's idea. Mary said, no. <laughs> and I said, oh my gosh, Mary does not play. Okay, Mary is not here for the BS. She's like, we too grown to be playing these damn games. And the games are always a little too much. It really is. And the games always start the fights. I swear, I think production says to one of the girls, ev every dinner, every get together, production is somewhere whispering in the ears of these girls saying, hey, play a game of truth or dare. Play a game of why I hate your husband. Play a game of, you know, something ridiculous that's going to get all the girls to fighting. It's so ridiculous. So they play this game, you know, say something about yourself that we don't know, you know, getting to know you. Meredith starts out with this BS about how she used to come down to Palm Springs when she was a kid to visit her grandparents. Who gives a damn? You know, nobody cared. <laughs> Whitney goes and says that she, you know, she likes to write. She's thinking about writing poems. Then Heather says that she likes birds. <laughs> we don't give a shit. <laughs> I mean, really? When she talks about liking birds, Mary comes out of nowhere, Miss, I'm not playing in this, that she used to have an African gray bird who, you know, was weird. I said, damn it, Mary, you're weird. She said that her bird would not obey her. It always liked her to stare at him. She said he was like a flying cat. Birds fly, Mary. I mean, Mary to me just does not seem like a pet person. It's something about Mary. Angie says that she's sensitive. Mary decides to participate in the game and tells everybody she's a loner. I said, well, Mary, I think we know that. I think everybody knows that. That's, you were supposed to say something people don't know. <laughs> I'm serious. Then Lisa says she's got her new piercing, you know, her second piercing. Monica is sick of it. She is sick of it. Out of nowhere, this woman blurts out to the group that they are all boring. She's in her confessionals talking about they are more boring than the people down at the senior citizen's home that she goes to visit with her grandma. I said, oh my gosh. She says, well, I effed my brother-in-law for 18 months. Honey, listen, everybody's face completely dropped oh my god mary cosby's face i said mary you better be on board with this you better be on board with this miss i'm married to my step granddaddy <laughs> meredith wanted the facts she said now wait a minute is this your sister's husband your husband's brother oh meredith wanted the full deets so she let him know it was her husband's sister's husband. Meredith, you could see her working it out in her head. Mary says, well, cheers. <laughs> I said, no, ma'am. I did not expect first lady pastor of the church to say cheers, but she sure did and she better. Monica and Mary, they, they, they need to be friends. That's all I'm saying. What I was surprised by is Whitney in her commentary talking about she's got to change the subject the next thing you know monica will be saying that she slept with the pope or maybe she's sleeping with somebody's husband and i said well wasn't that what you did isn't that what got you thrown out the church for a little bit weren't you sleeping with justin who was somebody's husband and wasn't he sleeping with you and you were somebody's wife or something like that don't judge monica for stuff that you have done as well just because Justin wasn't your brother-in-law doesn't mean that it was still not wrong because it was, and you are wrong in a lot of ways, little girl. I mean, Whitney is not my favorite. So then they go around giving their fuzzies and pricklies, fuzzies and pricklies, another way to start an argument. Heather says she doesn't trust Angie, and the reason she doesn't trust Angie is because her and Angie were cool in high school, and now Angie has chosen to buddy up with Whitney and Lisa, and I said, you know, this is where I'm confused. Last week or the week before that, Heather said that her and Angie weren't really cool in school. But now y'all was cool, cool enough to the fact that you want her to buddy up with you. I think the major problem is, is that Heather and Whitney are having a problem, but Angie is cool with Whitney. 
Heather has never liked Lisa, but Angie is cool with Lisa. So Heather is upset. Heather, I, girl, listen, stop this. Uh, you have got to let go of this childish behavior. Everyone is not going to like you and everyone is not going to be your friend. Everyone's not going to hate Lisa. Everyone's not going to hate Whitney. You just have to just be grown and stand on your own. 10 toes down, just stand on your own and figure out why you hate Lisa so much. This is getting to be ridiculous. Now, Lisa trying to get in the middle of the argument talking about, well, should we not uh, trust you? Because you were friends with Jen as well, you know, because Heather brought up that Angie got on with the group by being friends with Jen. And Lisa has some points, but this conversation wasn't about Lisa. So I was thinking, Lisa, please be quiet. Let this thing happen between her and Angie so I can see how this works out. And then you and Heather try to figure out your situation. The thing is so weird about this is how many times have we seen Heather and Lisa have this heart to heart communication? Then we see them good for a couple episodes and then Heather is back to hating Lisa again. And it, what is wrong? What is going on behind the scenes that we don't see? Then Heather brings up the whole comment that Angie made about her book. You know, now that she knows Lisa's in the book, she's going to get it and she wants Lisa to sign it. She says it was just a joke. It was a joke. I believe that. But it was a bit in bad taste because, you know, when Heather made the comments, you know, who's read the book or who has the book? Mary had just said out loud in front of everybody, nobody's buying that book, which was extremely rude. And then you made your comment, which came off as rude. So it was kind of a double whammy that just hit this woman in her heart. She wrote this book and, you know, she wants people to buy it and read it and with you know you and Mary acted a fool it just hurt her feelings a little bit I think that Angie should have said right in that moment Heather it was a joke and I am sorry if it came off the wrong way that might have helped a little bit but Angie I don't think that she's there to be friendly with anybody but Whitney and Lisa she was there to cause problems at that dinner Mary decided yet again she wasn't going to participate in this game. She said she was going to let Whitney and Lisa live. She said, I'm going to let y'all go. You know, and I said, thank you, Mary. <laughs> Please don't read both of them for filth right now. This is not going well. So it looked at, to me as if Lisa and Whitney were very relieved that Mary was going to leave them alone. But then I spoke too soon because Mary got involved. Oh, my God. Meredith was telling Whitney that her pr prickly was that you know she has bad communication and mary said no no that's not what you said earlier what you said earlier is that you were very upset that she brought this uninvited friend i said oh gosh mary cosby mary you supposed to be funny in the confessionals get out of this argument but i was I, you know it helped it helped move the scene along again i have to say that you know they went at it, they talked a little bit. You know, Meredith explained to her that she did think it was extremely rude to invite Angie and, you know, come early, take the biggest room. It was rude, it was tacky. But then we get to Lisa and Monica tells her that she thinks that her warm and fuzzy is that she's giving her mad props for wearing, you know, a thong to dinner. However, her prickly was that you know, she's going through a divorce. She's a single mom raising four kids. And then all day she's had to hear Lisa complaining about losing this $60,000 ring, which she understands. But as a single mom who is not rich, you know, she's upset by this. And listen, I am a single mom. I am not rich. I understand Monica's side, but I also understand Lisa's side. Please hear me out, peeps. Like, like I've always said, we may not always agree and it's all right for us to disagree, but this is my feelings on this. First of all, Monica, Lisa has absolutely nothing to do with your financial situation or the fallout of your marriage for the second time or the fact that you are a single mom. She has nothing to do with that. She has nothing to do with the fact that you ran down to the Louis Vuitton store to buy a purse that you really could not afford so that you could show off for the ladies. She has nothing to do with that. However, I do understand where you're coming from. I do understand how you would feel, how I would feel. But at the same time, Lisa has feelings as well. Do I think that it was okay that she brought the ring up? 
Yes, I do. It's the same day. It's her ring. She has emotional feelings about the ring and she's upset that she lost it. She should be able to share that. Do I think she should have dialed back on the telling everybody every single time it was $60,000? Yes, dial back dial back. You know, people don't need to hear that. It was $60,000. It was $60,000. We got it. Now, I don't know if you kept saying it over and over again and being loud about it because you wanted to file your insurance claim. I don't know. I don't know. But my thought is this, file your insurance claim, file a police report and, you know, pray on it, <laughs> pray on it. But <laughs> please stop bringing up the cost. Lisa then says something in her confessionals that I thought was really over the top and really rude. And it kind of came off like, I'm rich and you're poor bitch. You know, it came off like that. She says, when you can afford a 50K ring, maybe you'll understand. I thought that was really nasty. I don't think that was all right, Lisa. Now throughout this dinner, Heather is throwing back, throwing back back the chocolate martinis or espresso martinis or something she was doing too much you publicly said that you will never be friends with me why would i invite you and why would you want to come here publicly I publicly said that. honey public you've treated me really inappropriately and maybe i should actually explain to you how you've made me feel i'm not really interested <laughs> You're being very rude. Well, you can leave then. No, Meredith, I'm not this going anywhere. This is not your dinner. You can leave. Why do you want to be here? You're just a user. A user? You don't want to even start with me, sweetie pie. I have been kind to you. I've supported you. No, you have you. not been kind to me. I gave you all my time. I will be happy to write you a check for your hours. I don't you want a check for your time you because can go. guess what? You're, you can go. What are you going to write me a check for? Your jewelry that's up and cobwebs and dust on it? Oh you haven't gosh, sold a piece since 2015. You're embarrassing yourself. Embarrassing. You rent your f***ing life. Everything about you is fake. Okay, you're fake. 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 Get out. Stop. Oh Monica, my God. Don't tell me how no. to No, no. This is disgusting. You can leave. Now, honey, listen, let me first of all say that Angie is doing too much. However, I have to say that Angie has definitely activated Meredith. And, you know, that's enough to write her a little check anyway, even though <laughs> I laughed so hard when Meredith told her, she said, would you like me to write you a check for that hour of conversation you gave me? She said, you can leave. Oh, my gosh. Angie, you know, she says some pretty nasty things to Meredith, but Meredith was giving as good as she was getting. You know, um, they both need to be accountable for their actions and accountable for the things that they were saying to each other. You know, Angie telling Meredith, you rent your fucking life. Everything about you is fake. You're a fake bitch. And Monica saying, Angie, you know, Mary and the you can leave. I said, oh shit, you know, if this was my girl group, which, you know, I got a girl group of friends. First of all, at first we would have entertained the best, just a tiny bit. But as soon as it started the whole low blows going, we would have cut that shit quick. Like, first of all, both of y'all shut the hell up. We are out in public. You are both drunk and acting like fools right now. What is speaking with a fake ass British accent? Calm down. You are doing too much. And please leave Chad the waiter to hell alone. He works here. He is not here for the bullshit. Okay. He, he is a waiter. He is not a security guard. Leave this man alone. He said he'll try to do what he can. What you should have done is ask for a manager to have her removed or something. Where the hell is the Bravo security to remove her? This was ridiculous. Angie, you were wrong in so many ways. You forced yourself on this trip. You were not invited. And now you are acting like a complete jerk because you wanted Meredith to care about your needs and wants when you are an uninvited guest. And just for calling Meredith fake, come on now. The two fake people in this group is Whitney and Angie. Both of y'all are fake as hell. And Mary is on to both of y'all. Meredith did go out on Twitter and she said that she thinks she may have been possessed in Palm Springs. I, I agree, Meredith. The highlight of the night for me was when Angie offered to tell Meredith how she felt, how her feelings were hurt 
Meredith said she wasn't interested. And when she said she wasn't interested, Heather yelped and busted out laughing. And I said, oh my gosh, this was interesting. And the whole time that Meredith was having this meltdown and she is screaming and crying and storming off, did anybody notice that Whitney was smiling? I mean, Whitney was enjoying this. I said, oh God, this woman is so childish. Meredith telling Lisa that Angie doesn't want to talk about the husbands. As soon as she said that, the first thing I thought about was Kim when they were down in Amsterdam and Kyle was sitting off to the side being a terrible sister as always. When she said, you don't want to talk about the husbands and Lisa got all upset. That's the first thing I thought. I said, Ooh, oh, Meredith, Meredith's taking a page out of the Kim Richards book. Lisa didn't love it. Lisa didn't love it. And I said, Lisa, pipe down. Okay, get down off your high horse because you didn't have any problems talking bad shit about her and her husband and kids last season. Sit on back, okay? It's, me it, it's Angie's turn. I'm just saying. Anyway, <laughs> when they got on that bus to leave, Whitney decided that it was her business to harass Meredith. Now, Meredith had already had some kind of breakdown at the table talking about there's other things going on in this world. Children who will be disabled. She was having a fit. I don't know what was going on, but she broke down in the bus again. I said, oh, Lord, there's something going on in this woman's life in the background that we don't know about. But at some point, we'll find out what's happening in her, her life or her friend's life, her family's life. I don't know. She was drunk. OK, Whitney's tells her that she's always using some sort of excuse to get out of confrontation. And I said, well, Whitney, you did that last season. Remember last season you were going through your therapy and you were going through all these emotions and didn't you use that a lot last season? I, I could have swore she did. She absolutely did. But my part was when Mary got her together. She's fragile, broken up, and then you attack her. Mary, no, I didn't. I stood up for myself, and I stood up for the You're situation. Not, she didn't ask for every, your opinion to Every stand up time herself. it gets hard, she does this. You need to grow up. Mary, that's very you offensive. Grow up. You me called me a pornography, than... <gasps> sweetheart. A what? Pornography. What's you said you were afraid for your family for me. What's that pornography? You went all the way to the ground. No, you, you, went, you, said, you, you told the whole group you want to take me down. Mary, I You went to the dirt no, for me. No, I did not yes, say you that. Did. I never said you do porn. Pornography I didn't, I didn't porn. say I porn. You said, you said pornography. No, you called me. I should call me Heather Rutlinson. Predator. Predator. You called me and my husband a predator. Period. And I'm done with you. <laughs> God, the dead has arisen. <laughs> dead Heather, who was off in the corner fighting for her life. She was fighting for survival and fighting to hold down her vomit. She lifts her head up ever so and says, predator, and throws her head back down. I said, oh, 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 Heather, Heather, she came to get her check and she is loving Mary getting Whitney all the way together. Mary, I don't know why she got predator confused. I, I don't marry. Stop it, woman. Anyway, by the end of this episode, Heather is in the bus. She is vomiting. She is peeing on herself. She is doing the most. Listen, Heather, you are a author, a mother, a successful businesswoman. It looks real disgusting that you are this drunk. Girl, please stop with the bullshit. Anyway, peeps, get down in the comments and let me know what you think. And until next time, bye.